Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial. This one is about uh, the step effector and what it could do. Um, I stumbled, I, I randomly uh, decided to make something like this because I really love the um, the architectural animations some companies do where they build up uh, let's say they build up a roof and they build up a, a, a wall and then they build up built out a TV and stuff like and things like that I really like how they did that so I decided to do it in Cinema 4D so this is the end results of this tutorial it's a little little laggy but you get you, you get the idea things are building up building up building up in, into a solid object um, with some motion blur that I didn't um, Cinema 4D for a quick result. Okay, so let's jump right in. Uh, this is the final result, but we will start a new one. Alright, so first things first, I gotta do it every single time. I change this to 1920 by 1080. 1920 by 1080. 1080 and um, I'll show you guys how to actually make this a preset. Uh, same with control, control uh, shift V, bring this up to like 80 and then change this to red. And now go to go to render settings down here, go to save preset and you save it and you load it right here. So and and it, it's it uh, it comes it loads down here. So this is my preset, and this is what I had before my preset. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that. I don't need it. Um, I also have a bunch of things like object buffers, depth field, and occlusion, um, uh, global illumination, all that I don't really need. So I'm gonna go ahead and unselect that, unselect save because I don't need it, and only worry about ambient occlusion for now. So let's make the object. Uh, so we're going to make a plane. Uh, we're going to do this. Uh, sorry, my cat is flipping out. We're just going to make a rectangle. We're gonna make it editable by pressing C. Uh, first, first, I want to make the segments one by one, so I don't have a bajillion segments in this entire thing. Press C, um, and we're gonna zoom up out a bit. We're gonna move the pivot. Uh, before I did that, actually, I know it's 400. The height is 400, so half of 400 is 200. So if I move this 200 up. The, the very top of the pivot point is uh, up there. You can also, I think it's you press Alt and you just click it and it it snaps, but I'm not really too sure. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> make some cloners. So we're going to deselect that so we don't have to touch anymore. We're holding down Alt, hold down Alt, click, and then cloner so it applies the uh, planes inside the cloner. Notice it's it, they're they're coming out this direction. We don't want that, so we put that uh, uh, zero and put the put the x to negative two negative four hundred, right? Yeah, negative four hundred. Zoom up a bit. Zoom out a bit. We're gonna make this five. So now it's it's, it's uh, five units up. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So now let's just go ahead and add the texture. So we're gonna need two textures. I'm double clicking down here to add a texture. Call one back. Call the other one front. And we're gonna apply both of them to that plane. All right. In the back. The, the back will just be white, so back, double click it, let's just change this to white, okay, and then the front, 
getting rid of this, getting rid of that. We're gonna make it 100 percent transparency. So I'll show I'll show you what exactly I'm doing. So for the front, I'm going to where is it? I'm going to set it to front. Back, I'm gonna set the side to back. So now when it flips, it starts transparent. So if I render it real quick, there's nothing going on there. Um, and if I go at the other side, hey, check it out. There's something going on there. So, so the next thing I'm going to do is add a deformer. This de this wonderful de deformer is called the uh, effector. Sorry, this wonderful effector is called the step effector. So you, it's right here. I'm holding down Option uh, or Alt to apply it, and you notice it's it's bulking it out as it's stepping up but we don't want that um, we will fix that right now so go to parameter uh, uncheck uh, scale go to rotation and we're gonna change the uh, the P axis to negative 180 um, oops wrong one it's this one it's this one there we go negative 180 notice it's all crazy. Um, if you don't see the deformer, you will you should see a bunch of uh, s uh, rectangles down here. If you don't see it, go to filter and add and put deformer on. Uh, I personally took it off for the end of that project because it was just getting way, way too crazy. Um, so here's the deformer. Let's put it way down here. Uh, we're going to change the min max which is under effector to 100 percent and we're also going to go to the fall off make it a box so now see see all those these lines that I was I was talking about earlier we're gonna just make it kind of big and we're also going to settle it below uh, the the hundred percent uh, fall off is right here which we will set to 70 percent it's going to be below all of the objects and we're going to simply animate the the y axis sorry the x axis and you want to keep going keep going it can it can become really really big and you want it you want the fall off up here the the end of the 100% fall off to be above the entire object let's make a keyframe by holding down control um, okay and then that should be it if you notice now what I'm gonna do is uh, no, I'm gonna leave now notice it goes up and settles. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So let's keep going. Um, first, I'm going to get rid of the deformer right here because I'm going to add a bunch of these, and it's it's going to clutter the screen. And with the compression of uh, YouTube or Vimo, uh, it will just become very hectic. So I'm going to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do now is save it of course I already have my previous one right here and th this one I'll save as two and then let's go ahead and add a bunch of these so I'm gonna highlight both of these and go to uh, and then hit control whoops something just happened oh sorry option G to group you can also group it over here, and we're gonna call it one uh, side. We'll call it side, and then we will hold down Control and and move it to the left. Three hundred. I'm not. I'm not sure. I. Sorry about that. And. Okay, that's good enough. And let's do this and just render it real quick. 
Let's see if we can see the crease, which we can. Uh, let's move it over a tiny bit so it overlaps. Okay. So. Now we're going to make a bunch of them. So we're going to duplicate it, duplicate it, and we're going to duplicate it again, and again. So all of these should be, com should be coming up in sync, which they are. So we're going, next we're going to group all of these again. We are going to turn it and move it over here. I'm just roughly putting these together, or putting these two sides together. Just gonna render it real quick. Okay, and they all should come in simultaneously, which looks cool. Like that right here looks pretty cool. Um, but we aren't going to do that. We're going to go to window and then timeline. Here's the timeline. And we're going to make all of these random. So we're going to take some of these and move them up. Take some of these, move them up. Take some of those and move them this way. You know, just just do it at your free random. It really does not matter. Um, this will take a little bit of time, so bear with me. There's no right or reason what I'm doing. I'm just I'm just making something random. Random is good sometimes. Uh, I'm a big fan of Im imperfections. Uh, two more. Okay, so if I just cancel that out and here they come. Which, in my opinion, that looks way better than my my sample. Looks a lot, a lot more sporadic. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna save it. And let's go over the render settings next. So we're gonna put AO on. Boom. Ambient occlusion is on. We're also gonna add a floor. Floor. We're gonna move the floor up. So what the floor does is it adds to your scene. It may look like it's it stops right here, but it doesn't. So if I render it, let's take off ambient uh, take off that. Notice it goes on forever and ever and ever and ever until uh, some type of horizon line. So that's fine. So let's go ahead and add this to that. Make a floor texture. Uh, get rid of. Put the illuminance. That way, I'm not going to add any um, lights to the scene. So now it's 100% going to be there. Um, we're also going to add a background. And then let's make a background texture. BG. Background. Let's just go to like right here. And then move it up a bit. And then interactive. go to make this all the way up, go all the way up so you can see what's going on. Let's go to color, texture, gradient, and then circular. And we're going to make this the opposite. We want it to be white in the middle and grayish on the sides. We're going to get rid of that black. Just a vignette. Okay, and then we're going to 
add that ambient occlusion back in there. Boom, get rid of global illumination, you don't need that. So what ambient occlusion is doing is it's making these fake shadows between the geometry and it tends to make everything look amazing. Uh, it adds render time, um, but it's fine. So that's, that's that. And then let's also add some motion blur. First of all, let's go to effect, vector, motion blur, leave it, leave it as is, get rid of all these, and, oh, did I not name these? Okay, so this will be the, f see my, my computer's lagging, so this will be front, and this will be side. Um, Okay, and then we will right click on this, go to Cinema 4D Tags, uh, go to Motion Blur. We're going to make it 200% and we're also going to duplicate it. And now when you render it, it won't show up here if I render real quick. It won't show up here because there is no before frame and after frame. So you're just going to have to go ahead and render it out. So if you look at my... Um, my picture viewer, it'll come out like this. Now you can build anything uh, with this technique. I think it, I think it's amazing, and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I will have another tutorial going on next week, something a little bit more, a little bit cooler. And thank you for watching.